Morning, Luckies! Welcome back to the Lucky Channel, and welcome back to Mac and Jack's Big Bot Bonanza. I'm your host, Macon Traley, and I'm here with Jack Finney. Jack, tell, give me a beat. No. What? What? What the hell? Wait, 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 wait this isn't what we planned. Isn't it? Yeah, you're meant to give me a beat. I was meant to go into a sick like. A sick rap about uh, battle bots, about how cool, um, <laughs> about how cool fucking uh, Hydra is. Look, uh, I'm, look, I'm not going to be your Tyson Tonko in this situation. Oh come on! Why can't like? Do you want to? Do you want to be Zion Bernard instead? Mm, no. Can you imagine how much effort it would go into shaving your back? <laughs> I mean, you... I don't know. Like, do you? No. Okay, I well, well neither, no, neither of us know. <laughs> neither, neither of us are hairy motherfuckers. Well, maybe and... you aren't. <laughs> this, is anyway. a, this is a show about robot fighting. <laughs> I don't know, Mac, I'm eating a I'm eating a pudding right now, oh. so <laughs> what kind of pudding? Vanilla? Yeah. I've, it's got I've, a protein protein pudding. Uh, oh okay. I god, I haven't had pudding in fucking ages. Like, cause they don't sell like the pudding I had used to eat before. Like maybe I should find some new pudding. I mean, you don't really need pudding, you can just eat a jar of Vegemite. <laughs> That's that's not the same thing. What are you on about? <laughs> like I know, I know. You... <laughs> what the actual hell? <laughs> like, I'm... why don't you have some marmite instead of eating vanilla pudding? That has hey, that, that, that has Mac, in it. <laughs> Mac, let's not say things we can't take back. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so now you want to rhyme, eh? Now you, oh god. Anyway. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, today we have, <laughs> today we are fucked up. We are two fucked fuckers. Uh, we've, and we've got a good episode of uh, Battle Bots to talk about. <laughs> Jack is coming off of three weeks of being sick, so literally the entirety of the year so far, but finally seems to be getting better. So, hopefully I'll be in slightly better form this week than I have been the last few. Yeah, I mean, you, you already sound a lot better. You still sound like a bitch, right but I you're do. a lot better. <laughs> uh, look inward, Mac. <laughs> I always do. I always do. But let us kick things off with our opening fight. It's the uh, fight. Yeah. It's the fight we, we were this... all waiting for. <laughs> uh, we moved into this fight following a nice little highlight package of just how much hardware everybody's bought to BattleBots this year, hmm. and which really highlights how seriously all of the competitors take this. Makes sense, because many of these people own their own engineering shops and firms and everything, so obviously they're going to have a lot at their disposal, and considering how high a level BattleBots has reached at this point, everybody is going to bring every tool in the shop. Yeah. Figuratively oh, yeah. and literally. Yeah, true, and... I guess we could have talked about this later on, but like, may as well add this on, like, to this little bit. Like, at the, like, towards the end of the show, like, they had another package where, like, they were showing how, just how prepared everyone was, and that was, that was incredible. Oh, yeah. like, Absolutely. That... Anyway, Mac, it's your favorite robot, so take it away for us. Ah, uh, yes, it was Death Row, back and better than ever, against Cobalt. And when I say better than ever, I mean he fucking loses. <laughs> of course, because Ooh. that's how you fucking book it, I guess. Uh, unfortunately, Co unfortunately, Death Roll has spent a couple of years out of the battle box. Hmm. And a couple of years in robot fighting is an absolute eternity. It with is. With how quickly that the sport advances. True. And they even said that, like, Death Row is basically the exact same as it was before, so... Not the great like, thing! Not few, the great thing to do! 
with a few upgrades, but uh, largely the same machine as appeared in the 2019 season. Yeah, and I mean, it was a beast back then, and it, pro it probably is still a beast now, but it's been so long and... Then, yeah. Unfortunately for them, they were up against Cobalt, one of the most feared competitors in all of robot combat, being captained this year by Dave Moulds, the two-time... the One of the closest things that the World of Robot Combat has to a true world's champion, having won the UK Robot Wars title in Series 9 of Robot Wars, and winning this as Fighting Robots with Tungsten, mm. a predecessor to Cobalt. Yeah, like, it was, it was an uphill battle for Death Row, honestly, and it, they, could, they, they could barely even get off the ground. <laughs> Like, figuratively, of course. Them, the unfortunate thing for them here, while Death Roll has absolutely massive reach advantage against most other machines, Cobalt had a fantastic wedgelet setup in regards to their ground game for this particular fight. Hmm. And Death Roll, unfortunately, in this case, was not prepared to fight the ground game type of fight. Yeah, they just went straight for it, and it cost them. Yep. And, yep, unfortunately... Now, this is the thing. Death Roll actually did hold up quite well to the hits. It was still functioning at the time that it was counted out. Oh, yeah. The main reason that it was counted out, despite having a massive gash cut in its underside, was because it was in a very unfortunate and awkward position where it wasn't properly able to make use of its self-writer mm -hmm. to get it back onto its wheels. Yeah, and then its self-writer actually got destroyed, like, by the hammer. Yeah. And so it's very unfortunate. Death Roll showcasing that it's still a stone wall, still entirely, you know, very, very durable. But unfortunately for them, they got off on the wrong foot for this season. Hopefully we'll get to see Death Roll bounce back because obviously it's our favorite robot. And we really, really want to see it do well in its return. Absolutely. But we we can only wait and see. Its next opponent is Switchback, so... Yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have better hopes for that fight because yeah, Cobot was not the best opponent to like go up against like for your first fight, considering how much of a killer it was like last season. Yeah, uh, Cobalt looking very very dangerous in its opening bout, and yep, it's a very very strong shot to possibly go all the way this year. Dave Moulds is back and. Yep, the team could well go all the way. I think it could. Like, us, this episode alone has, like, several robots that could absolutely, like, go all the way. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, who, who's uh, Cobalt up against next? I don't know. You'll have to look uh, that up. Okay. I don't have, I'll, I'll have a quick, day. Yeah, have a quick look. Uh, but, yeah, like, Death Roll... Hopefully, yeah, hopefully Death Roll does better. We will if Death Row won, we were meant to do, like, an op a better opening bit, but we didn't get to do it because they fucking lost. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's unfortunate that this match ended up going the way that it did, uh, because we were very, very hyped going into it. Mm. We loved the covers on the knife and the blade of Death Roll as they brought out. We marked out when Kenny name-dropped Vegemite. Both of us did, because we both love Vegemite. Of course. And, you know, Death Roll opening up the fight by using a Yoshi plushie to press the button was amazing <laughs> oh hell yeah like they have like the gimmickry um, right it's just they need the right opponents <laughs> yeah okay in, in this case it was like a bad opening bout for them but i think they'll bounce back yeah uh, okay so next fight for cobalt is on episode seven against minotaur oh I, I would what like a fight that's be. that is either gonna be the opener or the main event like and actually, looking at the rest of the card, that's it's absolutely going to be the main event. Mm. But yeah, like, uh, an unfortunate beginning, like, opening fight, but hey, it's, it's Cobalt. But, like, you, you can't be too mad at losing to Cobalt. Yeah, Cobalt's an absolute killer, so... Mm. Who knows? Death Row could still bounce back, and even if they don't, what they learn this year will help them a lot next year. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like, there's no there's no doubt they'll be back in bed, never. Uh, yep, up next, definitely. up next, it is Ominous versus the Claw Viper. Speaking of being back and better than ever, we had a great highlight package on the improvements to Claw Viper, 
with mm-hmm. their newly uh, with their newly added idiot strap in order to help them control <laughs> their robot suplexing ability, uh, so that this time it doesn't screw up anything for the machine. Yep. It, as well yeah. as a nice little look at ominous. Now I don't know about you, but I was absolutely loving the Omni Wheel setup on Ominous, and I had high hopes for the potential of this machine. Oh yeah, like it, it definitely looks like it could um it could be a huge contender like down the line. Yeah, I mean, it's got a veteran team behind it as well. They used to compete with Reality a couple of years ago, going 2-2 two and two in the process. Yep. And, yep, uh, the actual machine itself, uh, very promising, in my opinion, but, as was highlighted, Claw Viper has seen massive improvements to its drive system. It's faster, it's more powerful than ever, it's got much better grappling, and we've really got to see that come out in this fight, because Claw Viper, start to finish, absolutely dominating performance. He is one speedy motherfucker, like, holy fuck, like, I, there's very, I, I think there are very few robots that are as fast as it, because, like, it was so fast that, like, it had to, like, slow down a little bit to, like, really gain control. It was, like, it was too fast, in senses, in a sense. I think I mean I think Kenny pointed out in the opening to the fight, Claw Viper has like a, a zero to twenty five miles per hour speed in like point five seconds, doesn't it? That's actually fucked, holy shit. Yeah, Claw Viper absolutely one to watch this year. Massive improvement to the machine. It just dominated this fight from start to finish, suplexing ominous all over the place, shunting it, ramming it about. Coming off almost like a combination of Complete Control and Storm 2 from Robot Wars at its peak. Yeah. Yeah, very And, cool. yeah, um, ultimately, Claw Viper managing to strand Ominous in just the right position where it could not use its stream to get back onto its wheels. It ended up stranded essentially on its weapon and ultimately unable to get back onto its Omni wheels and was counted out. And a very decisive win for Claw Viper hard-earned, tremendous driving performance here, and yeah, Claw yeah. Viper could very well be one to watch this year. Absolutely. Uh, the first of a running theme for this episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this was an awesome fight. <laughs> like, Cla- yeah. but, like, Claw Viper the last few seasons, like, it hasn't done the best, but like, they've really honed in on what they needed to fix, and god, it is an act- it may be a contender now. It's fucking awesome. Absolutely. And I'm going to say this already, this was a very early candidate for best driver. For oh, absolutely. Well, absolutely. Fantastic job from start to finish in this fight. You'd love to All see that it. Hold up, we'll see you throughout the rest of the episode. Yeah. All right. And... But up next... Yeah. If you want to go... <laughs> up next, we have the big... We have the big one-hit wonder of the night, Bloodsport versus Copperhead. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, two veteran... Teams, the ver- the uh hor- the horizontal spinning blades versus the vertical spinning drum. Uh, reading into this, my main notes were my anger at Chris's dissing of Cuddles the Snake. <laughs> what else do you have? Uh, let's see. Uh, where is Cuddles? Why is this child here? <laughs> Bring back the snake. <laughs> Yeah, not only did we lose Cuddles this year, we also lost the uh, the little snake hand puppet that they use to uh, press the button. That's a, that is unfortunate. Instead of the child. They have a, they have a child puppet now. Really, we, also, we also got a nice uh, shout-out to Disturbed in one of the intros as well. Ah, yes. Uh, the fe- with, uh, uh, the yeah, and of course, uh, as we all know, uh, the Dis- uh, Disturbed was the inspiration for your favorite wrestler's TNA theme song, Money Brown. Mac, you <laughs> shut the fuck up right now, or I will come down to Australia and slap the taste out of your mouth. Ah, oh, please, you couldn't fucking slap the wrong side of a barn. Mac, I don't fear you on any level. You fear me on the this deepest well level happened. possible. I I am your fear. I, I, I am your subconscious. <laughs> Like, if I have to come down to Australia and pounce you, I will. <laughs> see, you, see, you're gonna take your favorite oh, restless move. Oh, it. <laughs> oh, but speaking of a pounce, God, Copperhead, he pounced 
Oh, Bloodsport yeah. to death. Coming in. Now, coming in, Bloodsport looked absolutely mean with its new design, and <laughs> this fight was over as quickly as it began. Literally, one hit was all it took. One punch as Star was born. As... Bloodsport got punched across the entirety of the battle box and burst into flames with its self-writing bar breaking off mid-flight and then just coming down, going up in smoke, and boom. Not, so, not even mid-flight, like, at mid the start of the flight. Like, before, like, as he yeah. was taking off the ground. <laughs> Copperhead like... was a little bit lucky that it did work out that way because they seemed to be having some mobility issues after that hit, hmm. but luckily for them, that one hit was all it took, and Bloodsport was dead in. Yeah, the Copperhead was so up for a second after that fucking massive hit, after being sent flying backwards as well. But, like, by, like, yeah, it, it had the time to recover, and it won by knockout. One of the sickest knockouts, like, I've seen, like, one-hit knockouts I've seen. Absolutely. Bring back the okay, snake. Okay, do we have any <laughs> more? Of yeah, bring back the snake, please. I very, very much would like to see Cuddles back. Or even bring back, bring some baby snakes. Like, if you have a baby there, like, have a team of baby snakes. What are you even on right I, now? I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> I'm not on anything, but I'm I'm just like this. <laughs> Maybe you should be. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> No, never I'm never taking anything. <laughs> ah. But you know who took something? Lockjaw and Malice. They took three minutes to finish this fight. Ah uh, yes. Lockjaw versus Malice. A match that Really went in highlighting Donald Hudson's experience and how it's now do or die for him and his machines, because this is no country for old robots. Hmm, exactly. Like, this this is a legend basically on his last legs, and he needs to prove that he can still go. He needs to prove that he is, a le like, a force to be feared with. A fe feared with. Yeah, feared, because... <laughs> As we saw in the previous tournament, Donald Hudson unfortunately went 0-3 that year, and as a result, it was one of the first times that he was not in the tournament as a result. Mm. He usually manages to squeak his way in, like by winning the Desperado tournament when that gets held. Yeah. But unfortunately for him, he was left out in the cold last year. But So, as a result, he really needed to start his campaign this year with a win. He went back to basics, redesigned Lockjaw from the ground up, and got it as good as Lockjaw has ever been. Uh, ultimately, nice use of the plow, slowing down Malice's weapon in this bout, and really picking at shots, from what I could see. Yeah. Managing to land uh, some really good hits on the wheels, among other places. Uh, that being said, after a while, Lockjaw did start to develop some mobility issues, as its tires seemed to no longer be on the ground after a little while. Yeah. But, even in part of that, Lockjaw spent the fight firmly in control. Uh, its weapon had ultimately did start to burn out, but luckily for them, they'd already managed to disable Malice's weapon by that point, and by the time that we went to the judges, there was no question, this was easily Lockjaw's fight. Yeah, I, I'll say there's nothing much I can say, you pretty much some, like, described the entire fight perfectly though. Yeah, it was a well-earned win for Lockjaw, it was a good fight, quite entertaining, and it was really good to see Donald Hudson finally get another W, because it was heartbreaking to see how unfortunately he performed in the previous year. Even if he did still deliver a good showing in each of his fights, the fact that he managed to walk away with no wins at all, very upsetting to see. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, Bunny looked a little bit angry, like, after the decision, but, like, he, he got over it pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, personally, I, I, I don't really see any case for Malice to mm. have won this fight. Yeah. Nothing 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 against the team or anything, but yeah, like I this was firmly Lockjaw's fight. Yeah, absolutely. And up up next Lockjaw goes against uh Sawblaze. So hopefully the uh, yeah. hopefully that can that uh win this winning streak continues. This is an interesting fight when you look at it on paper, isn't it? Because obviously you put Sawblaze at a big advantage here, but you do, you never count Lockjaw out. Hmm, true. Donald Hudson is a man who can make miracles happen in the battle box. Hmm. Exactly. Like, that. I I think they can do it. I think they can pull off. That being said, they're up against the best version of Sawblaze that we've seen yet. So yeah, yeah, true. Like Very true. 
Uh, As for Malice, did we, get, did we get a look at who Malice is facing oh, next? Oh, uh, let me check quickly. Malice. Uh, Malice is up next against... Oh, wow, next episode against Emulsifier. Hmm, so, that's an interesting one. It is, like... We did see Emulsifier perform quite well in its fight against Fusion, so... Yeah. Who knows, they could, they could do quite well against Malice. Yeah, true, true. I like Malice, but it does seem I like Malice, but it does seem to be falling into the uh role of the perennial mid card gatekeeping robot, you know? Yeah. I like I can't re really remember a time where it's done any like old that spectacular uh, spectacularly well, but like I don't know, it's it's always a it's a it's a good hand. Yeah, it's like I'm um, I'm not saying it's not like a a potential champion in the right circumstances, hmm. but it's like, ultimately it does seem to be more of a gatekeeper robot, or at least that seems to be the role that it's fallen into so far. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a well-made robot, it's just like, it doesn't have the best luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fingers crossed they can change that in the future, because after all, Death Roll went from losing in uh, the very first round of the 2016 competition to coming back and going all the way to the semi-finals in its next appearance. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, true, true. Like, I mean, look, Odania is a little long. Yeah, so, the, so there's no reason to think that Malice couldn't go far in the future. But, yeah, yeah right now it does seem to have fallen into the uh, the gatekeeper role, almost. The hell of a hand category. Exactly, yeah. Uh, with that in mind, we now move on to our next fight of the evening. Mac, you want to take it away for this one? Because we know how fond you are yes. of one of them. Yes, it is Triton versus my boy Lucky. And man, they this uh yeah, this fight like you could you would have thought like it could have been Tritons, but Lucky had a plan. He had a goddamn good game plan and he worked it to perfection. Yeah, this is the thing. They went into the fight referring to Triton as a roided out tombstone, and I was super jazzed to see how that would work out. Unfortunately for Triton, it didn't quite go according to their plans. Mm. Uh, Team Lucky coming out with one of the most adorable doggos that we've ever seen on BattleBox with his little sunglasses and his headgear and his bow tie and everything. Yeah. But also with Lucky sporting an absolutely monstrous spinner killer plow, which mm. they utilized to great effect. Oh, hell yeah. Like, he was just getting right in on Triton, like... Triton was bouncing right off of Lucky. It was beautiful to see. Uh, Lucky got some great... Yep. I like got a, a good flip on uh, Triton, too. This is true, yes. Lucky managing to box rush Triton, managing to help uh, keep its weapon not quite getting up to full power, and with that, ultimately managing to get it around the box a bit, and put it into a position where it was ultimately immobilized as well. Hmm. Uh, great control and tactics from Lucky, totally neutralizing the power of Triton. I would say this was an honorable mention for best driving as well. Oh, like, yeah. It was a great, great job by Lucky here. Just uh, a, a good driving a good driving lesson for all involved. Exactly. Uh, Triton did get, like, some good hits in, but, like, nothing he couldn't get any, like, major damage in, because, like, the, the, yeah, strategy, was, the this... strategy was just too good. Yeah, this wasn't a lucky ruffle stump or anything like that. Triton did manage to get some good hits, but you know, ultimately, this just this just go this just went to show that uh, no matter how powerful your weapon is, it's mainly good solid engineering and driving skill that's going to take you to farthest in robot combat. Exactly. Plus, like we've had like so many years of Tombstone that like people know the strategy to beat to, like to beat that kind of robot, like whose main power is like. Well, power. <laughs> yeah, and it's like try and like obviously you can logically extend that strategy to fight Triton as well. Yeah, exactly. Like Triton is like like you said, Triton is basically just Tombstone and Roids. <laughs> like we even yeah, made the they... joke about it being Tombstone during like that episode zero. So <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, we did, didn't we? We did. Ah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like great uh... stuff for Lucky. I, I'm yep, totally fine. Lucky. lucky Championship 2023. Let's go. Uh, a, a lucky tell on every championship battle. <laughs> Tournament fight, even. Tournament episode. 
Sorry, my my life is flashing before my eyes right now. <laughs> like, what have I done? Whoa, what whoa, I whoa, done whoa, Jack! Wait, what you did? You started a podcast with me. Uh, this is true. This is very true. It is. Uh, this, will, uh, this will be something that will be uh, playing into the uh, later decisions I make in life, then, won't it? <laughs> You're you're crescenting whether or not you should start that fucking production company with me now. <laughs> uh, anyway, up next, Jackpot versus Scorpius. Two great established teams. Should be a great fight. That was the notes that I made for this. Yep. How how I did was... I go for you? <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> of course you were. Scorpius came in looking badass as fuck, as it always does. And Jackpot Shremek failed pretty much immediately as it managed to get turned up and over. Scorpios hit the delicate underbelly in just the right spot. Jackpot unable to get itself back onto its wheels and counted out right as it burst into flames as well. So... It's a very nice fire. <laughs> I'm sure it was very warm. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, very unfortunate loss for Jackpot. Jackpot. Jackpot getting its first true taste of defeat prior to the tournament, because up until now, I believe Jackpot has always gone undefeated in the lead up to the tournament. It, ha it? it has, yeah, like uh, completely undefeated in like the red in the main talk fights pre tournament pre uh, the preseason is it called? Yeah, yeah, preseason, yeah. Uh, and Scorpius, I, I think they said they didn't have the best like record in the pre preseason. But like yeah, pre pre. Oh no, Scorpius, Scorpius has a great record in the preseason. Does it? Like for for years, Scorpius ran undefeated in the preseason. Oh really? Only, unfortunately, it tended to go out in the first round of the actual tournament. Okay, must have misheard then. Uh, yeah. It's like last year they didn't have the best uh, preseason record, but they still made it into the tournament. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. That's it. That's it, Dan. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, but... It was unfortunate. I was hoping for a very entertaining fight here, but unfortunately, it uh, it did not deliver in that regard. But very stop, very solid win for Scorpios, and we'll see how the rest of everything goes. Yeah, uh, I'll see. Let's find out quickly who they're up against because why not? Uh, Scorpios is next up against Big Dill, and Danny Jackpot is up against. Rotator. Oh, actually both on the same episode. Episode 6. <laughs> Ooh, that will be an interesting one then. Yeah. Yep. We will come to Rotator in just a moment. True, true. And let's talk about Honestly, a different I'm, robot that we... I'm seeing, that we oh, yeah. I'm seeing Scorpius getting into the tournament quite easily this year, to be honest. I think maybe, yeah. Because, like, what what is the rest of it, like, schedule? Uh, Scorpius. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> yeah, I think even if it loses any of its fights, it will still, you know, like put up a great fight. Yeah, and probably get in like that. Yeah, because it also has uh, Saw Blaze and um, and Ribot to face off against. Actually, wait, didn't they fight Ribot last season? Oh, is that, some, mm, is that someone not that else? I remember. Cause... No, somebody else fought Ribot. Oh, right, it was. Ribot, Ribot got killed last season by Hydra. Okay, no, yeah, they got killed by Hydra, but like in the preseason, I'm pretty sure they fought like a robot like Scorpius. Maybe it was. Oh, who was it? Oh, wait, it was Whiplash! That's who I'm thinking of, it's Whiplash. Yep. Okay. Uh, but yeah. That should be good. And so, with that, we come to the main event of the evening as we got a great highlight of both teams with them playing up the incomparable Jake Ewart as the heel and Victor Soto as the underdog babyface going into this fight. That's right, everybody. It's time for Hydra versus Rotator. Uh, we made yes, a point lad. of playing up uh, Jake's frustration with how things worked out with Tantrum in the previous year, as well as highlighting the fact that Tantrum also defeated Rotator en route to the championship. Mm -hmm. Like, Jake maintaining that uh, he won that fight and is still very annoyed at... Uh, at the decision outcome, but we are not here to debate that now, are yeah, we, Matt? Yeah, we're definitely not here to debate whether or not he should have been in a tournament to begin with. He shouldn't have, but that's neither here nor there. 
yeah, we love we love Jake Hewitt, but yeah, that was that was our firm opinion on it, and we also agreed that Tantrum had won that fight anyway. We do love you, Jake. Thank you very much for being a friend of the podcast. Yes, <laughs> thank you for that one comment. More yes, I mean, come on, Mac. Let let's be real, Mac. It made the whole thing worthwhile when he it did. did that. It, it absolutely did. It was, it was a great moment. I, like I I appreciate it. Uh, there was a bunch of uh, pre-fight drama as well, based on some malfunctioning that was going on with uh, Rotator and I believe it's driving signal. But ultimately, they managed to get themselves together and get themselves into the battle box. Now, Rotator came in looking as beautiful as ever, interestingly running inverted or with an overcutter sort of situation going on. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they were going to be looking to strike the top of Hydra because Hydra was not a robot that they were going to have a good chance of beating in regards to the ground game yeah so i guess the main focus would have been to get around to the sides and try and strike up high hydra came in also looking absolutely beautiful there's something incredibly aesthetically pleasing about hydra this year in my opinion mac hmm. and yep came out very strong hydra <laughs> wasted absolutely no time in this fight just monstrous flip after monstrous flip Victor yeah. Soda was not able to get anything going, and 11 flips later, Hydra strands Rotator in just the right position, where it's pinned off of the floor, essentially, by its own forks. Yeah. And <laughs> with uh, that, counted out, massive win for Jake, and super, dom super dominant job, very convincing. And we are all set for the grudge match with Tantrum in his next appearance. Hmm. God, that has to be good. I absolutely... I loved Jake's post-match interview here. Oh, yeah. We saw how confident... We saw how comp cocky and confident he was. But he he's so likable in these segments. Like, you know, he's, he's the bad boy of BattleBots. He's meant to be, like, the modern villain and everything. But you still like him. You still want to see him win. Yeah, he, he's, fun, just... he's fun to boo. <laughs> Yeah, but, he's the guy we love to hate, and we also love to see him do well. Yeah, because he's gotten so good at like his personality. Like, it's it's very it's very fun to see. Absolutely, and yeah, uh, next op next opponent for them, Tantrum, and oh boy, that is going to be a hell of a fight. Oh hell yeah! Because we saw that last time, and that that went well for them. <laughs> Yeah, uh, now to be fair, it was an incredibly close fight with Tantrum, and while I do personally feel that Tantrum did win that fight, I can definitely see the argument for why Hydra would have won. Honestly, for me, it comes down to the fact that he spent all of his time sitting in the middle of the battle box waiting for Tantrum to come to him. Yeah. If he'd pursued Tantrum about the arena more aggressively, I think he would have won. Probably, yeah. But as it is, a lot of the aggression points would have gone to Tantrum in that situation. Yeah. But, look, we, we won't have that situation this time. The game has changed. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Um, They made a point of pointing out in the lead-up to this that Jake is planning to pursue everything aggressively, and he's not going to, like, make use of that same tactic again. He's going for knockouts every time, and he's not going to focus on as much on, like, a steady control, but he's going to be a lot more actively aggressive while still, you know, maintaining all of his skill. I see, I and honestly, yeah. if, if he can stick to that game plan, he could well win this. I see, yeah, he could well go all the way. Yeah, like, Hydra's honestly a, ro like, a really good uh, offense robot. Like, yeah. But honestly, I'm surprised he didn't hasn't gone on the offense, like, more. Like, because, like, I, I guess, like, just staying back and just waiting for them to come to you offenses, like, it worked. Because, like, he did win, but, like, that could only get you so far, like, up to a point. And being on the offense, for, like, for a robot this dangerous, like, I feel like it's going to be a better strategy, like, in the long run. Well, this is the thing. Hydra's a great defensively-minded robot as well as offensively, mm -hmm. and I can understand his more conservative approach with how he had pursued things before, considering that Hydra does use a very complex hydraulically powered flipping system. True, That true. obviously would be very difficult to repair, mm. so I, I feel like that factors into it. But ultimately, yeah, I'm thinking he could well do, he could well pull it off this year, and you know what? I am here for it. I am, I am all in to see him do this. I'll see, yeah. To go far this year. I, 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 yeah, I want to see how well he does. 
Yeah. I'll still, I'll still, since this I'll year, still everyone, since, since, this year, since this year, everyone's getting four fights and not just him. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll still I'll still boo him if he wins, but <laughs> hey, well, it's going to depend on how the win goes. Isn't you know, it? actually, yeah, good point. Yeah, that's a true point. <laughs> but yeah, uh... like honestly, yeah, he could go all the way. I'm here for it if he does, and yeah, we'll just we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, great performance here. Um, yeah, can't wait to see the, can't wait to see Hydra versus Tantrum the Reckoning. That's going to be awesome. Oh, hell yeah. All right, with that, that is the episode. Do we have anything else that we need to talk about this week before we but, go to the awards, Matt? Uh, from the episode, no, I don't believe so. Like, I think we covered everything. Yep. Okay, with that, we come to the awards for the week. Uh, right, we might as well go in order that we mentioned them as before. Yep. Uh, driver of the night, best driver, Claw uh, Viper, yep. quite handle. E very easily, like it. It was beating motherfucker, and it got the job done. Yep, just a absolute masterclass in driving skill, and really showcasing the improvements that Claw Viper has undergone, both in terms of driving skill and in terms of hardware. Yep. So, yep, great job, Claw Viper. You've won your first award of the season. Uh, look uh, out of the night. night. Yep, knockout of the night. Well, like there's ever any doubt in this instance, it's got to be Bloodsport versus Copperhead. Of course, of like, course. Like, just the force of the hit, one hit KO, brutal destruction, Bloodsport going up in flames. You can't argue with this one. Yeah. This was easily knockout of the night. You're, you're fucking beautiful. Uh... Uh, next, we have Underdog of the Night. Yes, yeah, Spike Dudley. And honestly, Matt? Yep, yeah, well... Underdog and Spike Dudley are different awards. No, Remember, no. Spike Dudley's got with a gimmick. Is it? Though? Wait, is it? No, I Sp Spike Dudley is the underdog, though. That's literally the gimmick. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking best performance and you're, losing after. You're thinking best performance, yeah. <laughs> the doors are too right. different. <laughs> but, yeah, Spike, wow. okay. Spike Dudley. Uh... Well, uh... with that in mind, it's uh, Claw Viper, isn't it? Because everybody, like... Massive percentage were expecting Ominous to come out as the convincing winner, and Claw Viper instead just like mop the floor with them, essentially. True, true. Yeah, like so. Congratulations, congratulations, Claw Viper. That's two awards you've won in yeah. this episode. Mm. Oh hell yeah! Uh, um, I was not not gonna lie, was not expecting that match. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was uh, best, perfor best performance in a losing effort. What do we have? Uh, we, well, we didn't discuss it because you got the, the awards wrong. <laughs> uh, God, this is actually a good question. I want to say Triton, because, like, it, of all the words, actually, right, no malice, probably. Would be the logical pick here, yeah, because it's not like it failed miserably against. Uh... Lockjaw. It did it, it still manage to land some hits and everything. Yeah, it, it put up a good fight. It, like, damaged the wheels enough where, like, uh, Lockjaw was sort of in trouble at times. Uh, this is true. Yeah, okay. Uh, Malice. Yep, sounds good to me. Because uh, most of the fights in this episode admittedly were kind of squash matches. So, Malice, you win by virtue of having actually had a competitive fight in a losing effort in this hey. one. So, well done. Finally, we come to the fight of the night. Mac, who do we got? Uh, this was kind of a hard one because we had to really like think about which of these which of these fights which were ma majority like squash matches uh, were the fun were, were the best one. <laughs> and ultimately, we decided on Claw Viper versus Ominous. Yep, that one reasonably reasonably competitive. But at the same time, still pretty much a squash. But it was like the most entertaining of the squashes, yeah, in like, my opinion. Yeah, because it was fun to see Claw Viper like how much it improved. Like just him dra like dragging Ominous all over the place. It was it was fun. It was it was fantastic. Yeah, dragging, slamming, suplexing. It was awesome. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. So wow, Claw Viper wins three awards in one episode. You love to see it. 
quite the way to kick off your season, Claw Viper. Mm. Let's see if you can maintain the hype. Oh, hell yeah. With that, Mac, we come to our off-topic portion of the episode. Do we have anything that we want to discuss this I, week? I mean, there's pretty much only one thing we can talk about, and that's, uh, yeah, that's the uh, passing of uh, Jay Briscoe. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, for those who are unaware, uh, Jamin Pugh, better known as Jay Briscoe of the Briscoe Brothers, Ring of Honor original, and the re- and one of one half of the reigning Ring of Honor tag team champions, was tragically killed this week in a automobile accident while driving his daughters to cheerleading practice. Uh, one of his daughters, do- I believe that one of them ended up in critical condition in the hospital, and and as a result had to have emergency surgery, hmm. where she where she remains, I believe. Uh, Jay okay. unfortunately did not. Jay unfortunately did not survive the automobile wreck. Uh, this was caused by my understanding when somebody merged from an opposite lane and uh, impacted with his truck, and they died on impact. And Jay, from what I understand, also died on impact. Is that correct, Matt? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, I believe that is true. Like. God, like this is it's still it's still wild that like this even happened like because it was only a month ago where he like where the briscoe brothers like had that amazing like amazing uh double dog collar match with uh ftr like it's it it honestly still it still feels unreal like fuck oh no yeah. appa- apparently his uh Okay, so his daughter, like, the one that was, like, in critical condition, like, couldn't, like, didn't have feeling, feeling like, at her, like, extremities, um, that return, feeling has returned to, like, to her legs and all that, so, that, that's good, that, that's very good in it, like, hopefully, like, hopefully they make a full that's recovery. Some, that's something, at least, but, yeah, this is not just a real thing to experience. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I have had... A lot of issues with Jay Briscoe over the years, personally. I was never really a fan of him as a singles talent, so I always found the like his Ring of Honor title ring rather overrated, for example. And he also, a number of years ago, made a number of comments and tweets where he said that if anybody tried to teach his children that gay marriage was okay, that he would shoot them. Yeah. That was my main bone of contention with Jay Briscoe for many years. Um... In recent years, Jay had actually changed a lot as a person, by my understanding. He'd gotten to know a lot more people within the LGBTQ community and had moved on from his previous opinions and had gone out of his way to make amends based off of comments from other, from openly gay wrestlers, such as Effie, who he'd worked with during his tenure in GCW. Yeah. That's a, that's correct, isn't it, Mike? It is, yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you want to want proof of like how much he changed, he lost to a team na- a team whose name was Bussy. <laughs> that <laughs> that that's fucking awesome. Like it, it's honestly, it's it's incredible that like he realized how much like he like how much he fucked up with that like those comments and like how he actively like seeked out like wanting to change. Like it's. It speak. It truly speaks to like the the character of the man. Like he, very. I don't think anyone has anything bad to say about him. Like honestly. Yeah, this is the thing. Um, there's been a massive outpour of support from within the wrestling community. We've seen people like Chris Jericho donating like 15k to his like a uh, funeral expenses. Uh, Jim and Stacy Cornette 2k. Uh, the F uh FTR I believe donated something like somewhere in the area of 10 grand and just you're seeing a massive outpouring from all throughout the wrestling community but also from throughout the uh, community that the briscoes themselves lived in Mm. Uh, by my understanding multiple businesses and schools and everything in the area closed upon news of this because uh, jay was very very active within the community as well and dude this really is just such an absolute tragedy i mean he was, he was driving his daughters to cheerleading practice, and for for something entirely no fault of his own, he compl- he lost his life. It's, it's just... It's fucked. It's just... That, that's the only way you can put it. It's fucked. Like... Fuck. I, in I, any I, case... I don't even know what to say. <laughs> fuck. Nor, nor do I in this instance, uh... 
The Briscoes, known for their classic tag team matches all over the world, like they had a massive influence on the indie wrestling scene over the last decade. Our friend Xander actually got to uh, actually got to meet them when they went to the uh, when they came and competed at the uh, wrestling company that he was working at, at the time. Had nothing but good things to say about them as well. They're hmm. apparently very friendly, very helpful towards uh, towards any of the younger people in the locker room. Happy to dish out advice. Uh, because this is the thing, the Briscoes, they were a, a tag team always keen to learn from their early days, and they were absolutely keen to help out the uh, emerging crop of young talent as well. Oh. Very selfless wrestlers in that regard, by my understanding. Yeah, because uh, I believe it was Kevin Owens who, like, um, he said, like, the first time he met, like, Jay, like, he asked him, like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to work today. What are we going to do? Uh, and Jay's reaction was, we're gonna go and fucking kill it. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> like, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but yeah, like, that's basically it, and they killed it every fucking time they got in the ring together. Like... Yeah, they just, uh, they just go out, not really talk about things beforehand, and just tear the house down anyway. Exactly. Because they had very fantastic psychology, brilliant ability to read the crowd in that regard. Oh, yeah. Like, God... Those matches with, uh, Steve and Generico were fucking incredible. Like, I... I, I need to read what's, uh, their ladder war. Hell, even when hell, remember when they had the the matches with the old ass Rock and Roll Express? Like, oh, I say that before too love for them, but oh, you know, like the Rock and Roll Express at that point in their sixties, and you know they still went out and had an amazing match with the Briscoes. Dude, the Rock and Roll Express are fucking awesome. <laughs> like Rick, Ricky Morton, <laughs> Ricky Morton is fucking based. Like, did you see that picture with him with the um the trans fly, uh, trans pride flag? <laughs> Yes, I did. That's... Somebody was asking him what the hell was going on, and he just like <laughs> immediately came out and supported the trans community, and it was awesome. Yeah, oh, good. I fucking, I fucking love the Rock and Roll Express. <laughs> the motherfucker does Canadian destroyers in his fucking sixties. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely amazing. God, but yeah, but yeah, the Briscoes had a great tag, had a great couple of tag team matches with them, mm. didn't they? And that was amazing, yeah. considering you know at that point, Rock and Roll Express in their sixties. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, like just. I mean, like the the Briscoes, they fought a who's who of tag teams over the years and had some of the best matches of those teams' careers with them because they were just fantastic natural team. Yeah, and even up to now, like even like before Jay's passing, like they were still like absolutely killing it. Like they had the like tag team fear of the year last year with uh, FTR, like putting on some of the best tag team matches of all time. Hmm. Like... And the, one of the one of the tragic things in all of this is that unfortunately one of the executives up at uh, up at the network that AEW was on refused to allow AEW to wear a Jay Briscoe tribute as mm. part of it yeah, because what, of yeah, the what aforementioned, aforementioned homophobic comments that Jay has made in the years past. And honestly, dude, that's just considering that Jay has publicly apologized and tried to make amends for that over the years. And that also, is such a massive dick move. And also, considering, especially considering yeah. some the other stuff, considering some of the other stuff they've let uh, they've let fly on on AEW and never objected to before. For example, like I know that you love the guy, but the fact of the matter is, Nick Gage is a convicted felon who was who was Nick who, you know robbed the bank and everything, and they still let him on TV without issue. Uh, they let Mike Tyson on TV. Like, I know that Mike Tyson is a huge name and everything, but he's also a convicted rapist and everything. Yep. And there was no objection to him appearing. I'm not trying to shit on Jay Briss, on Nick Gage or anything like that. I'm just, like, pointing out the uh, discrepancy here. I, but, I mean, look, uh, if you, Jay if you... Briscoe makes comments years ago that he's... Makes, year, makes comments years ago that he's apologized for and made amends for, and they still won't let them air a tribute to him. I mean, if you want... A, That's if you want a, right. If you want a better comparison, like, for for how fucked it is, like, uh... They're still trying to get Urza Miller to be a flash. They're still yeah. trying to force that. <laughs> Despite all the yeah. bullshit! <laughs> it is... Yeah. Point is, that board is fucked. Yep. But yeah, like... Anyway, to return to, re to, return to the original point, though... Jay Briscoe, Jamin Pugh, thank you for everything. You will be sorely missed. You will be. Reach for the sky, boy.
So with that, we come to the end of the episode. Next week's episode promises to be an absolute banger as we see the return of the British invasion, Quantum making its second appearance of the season as it looks to bite its way to another win. Beta, the king of the Hammerbots, making its triumphant return. Hopefully this time get, uh, aiming to get more than a few good hits in. Shout out to everybody who's still mad about Beta's win. You <laughs> suck. And of course, we finally get the return of Monsoon! Shout out to Tim Rackers. We love you, mate. We love you, big dude. Oh, hell yeah, son. Oh, that should be a fucking oh. good one. Yeah, it's going to be a knockdown, drag out slugfest. Uh, on top of that, we actually get to see the return of the new version of Kraken as well. Ooh. Going up against Beta in this as well. And I'm very conflicted on who to root for there. <laughs> you root for the fans. The fans are going to win this. Yep. No matter who wins, I win. Because I love both machines and I'll be happy if either of them win. Indeed. <laughs> but what if neither of them win? What if it's a double count out? <laughs> well, then you suck. <laughs> With that, <laughs> Wait, what we the are done for the week, everybody. <laughs> I hope you have a great one. And we look forward to seeing you again. Same time next week. Maybe, well, for, may, if, maybe not same time. <laughs> like it, Yeah. Okay. The schedule very, very dependent on when I actually edit. <laughs> yes. And also when we're able to actually watch the episode as it's been a bit inconsistent. This yeah. is the joy of being international, everybody. Until Great. next time, take care. Stay safe. We love you. Here on the Lucky Channel. Bye.